Welcome to the Heart of a Viking. These art lessons are taught by Mrs. Minto from the Cape Henlopen School District in Delaware. I hope you have fun, create imaginative works of art, and make sure you share them with someone because, after all, the visual arts are meant to be seen. Salome Cape Artists, Legend and I are welcoming you back to the Heart of a Viking. In today's episode, we are continuing our adventures in Asia by traveling to Iran. The lesson today is inspired by the traditional art mosaic tiles that are often found there. These tiles are beautiful, symmetrical, and created using many shades of blues and golds. I can't wait for you to see those tiles covering entire walls in Iran. Well, for now, Legends and I are going to say goodbye in Persian. That's the language that's spoken in Iran. Ready? Kodavez! Islamic art traditionally features geometric designs using shapes that you know, like squares, rectangles, triangles, and rhombuses. It also includes many repeating patterns. The traditional colors that are often seen in these Islamic designs include shades of blue and gold. These designs are often found in a mosque. A mosque is a Muslim place of worship, and you will often see the geometric art included in their designs. You'll see it on the carpets, the rugs, even on the tiled walls. These all feature symmetrical shapes and repeating patterns. Many of the geometric tiles feature symmetry. Symmetry is a similarity or balance between different parts of something. For example, people, animals, and plants can also be symmetrical. The tiles here have symmetry. If you divide it in half, the right side and the left side are the same, or the top and the bottom. Your face has symmetry too. Go ahead, look in the mirror. You have an eye on each side, half a nose, a half of mouth, an ear, and your hair matches from the left to the right sides. What else around your house might have symmetry? So it's time to begin our tile designs. As always, you have some choices. Do you think you'll try the basic design or the challenge? The basic has mostly squares and rectangles, where the challenge includes more triangles and rhombuses. Think about it and let's get started. All right, Cape Artists, are you ready for this challenge? Today's project does require a little bit of patience with yourself as you are learning this new technique. So if you get frustrated or if you make a mistake, just pause the video, figure out what you need to do, rewind it if you need to watch it a second time, but keep moving forward. That's how we learn, we challenge ourselves. All right, so to begin this challenge, let me put this aside. We just need a few simple supplies. We need a pair of scissors for cutting, a pencil for drawing, and something to color with. I'm gonna use colored pencils today. And then, of course, your drawing paper. Okay, so I'm gonna start by turning this rectangle paper into a square. So I take this bottom corner all the way to the top like we've done before, line up this top edge with this edge of the paper, go ahead and fold it, hold this closed while you trace down the side. And then, once you open that up, I'd like for you to cut on that line right there. All right, so the first thing we need is this little guy. So I'm actually going to be using him today as my straight edge. If I had a ruler at home, I could use a ruler for this next part as well, but I'm going to actually use this little piece of paper as my ruler. So what I need to do is fold it in half so that it's long and thin. And this half right here, the side that I'm pressing with my fingernail, that's the side that I'm going to be tracing. So let's see how we use this as a ruler. Roller. All right, so to use this as a roller, I'm going to take this side here, line it up with the edge of my paper, nice and straight, hold it, and then using your pencil, I'd like for you to trace right down this edge. Perfect. Then slide it over, line the edge up with your pencil line now, and trace down the edge. Don't forget, you can always ask an art assistant, a grown up or an older brother or sister, somebody that you trust to hold your paper for you and help you with this part if you need it. 
And I want you to go all the way to the other side, as far as you can go. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but this last tracing is skinnier. So I actually want to cut that off. Okay, and that is scrap. We don't need that at all. So you can recycle it or save it for later if you want to. All right, so that's perfect. Now I'm going to turn my paper this way, put my straight edge over here again, but this time my lines will be crossing the other lines that I drew. All right, and just like last time, I ended up with a skinny little piece on the end, so I need to remove that. Excellent. Now, for this to be a perfect square, which is what we need for our tile designs, I have to have the same amount of spaces across the top as I do down. So let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six across the top. And now let's count down. One, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. That means that my per tile is perfectly square and I'm ready to move on. Some of my older students, I wonder if you know what six times six is because that's how many little squares I have on the whole thing. Hmm. All right, so now I need to start my design. So I have lots of choices. I could leave some spaces that are just squares and color those in a solid color. I could connect two spaces and I could make them into a long rectangle. Or I could cut some spaces in half and turn them into triangles. So I have a big blue triangle here or a small triangle. I have a little orange one right there. And one other choice is I could divide some of my spaces in half and connect them in just the right way to create a rhombus. So let's see what kind of designs you can come up with. Now, one thing about the Islamic tiles is that they are symmetrical. That means whatever you do on the right side of your paper, you should do the same thing on the left side. All right, so, so far I've made myself two little triangles, two little triangles, two little triangles, and two little triangles. Excellent. So now let's see if I can make myself a rectangle. Okay, so that space right there, I'm going to connect those two spaces and have them be a rectangle. If I wanted a square, just a regular square, I don't really have to do anything. I can just leave it just how it is. Now, since I put a rectangle on this side, I need to put a rectangle on this side right here. Excellent, and I'm gonna repeat that at the bottom. Okay, so before I go any further, I am actually gonna stop here and begin to color some of my spaces in because it gets to be a little bit overwhelming if you wait to color at the end. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and pick out some of my colors. The colors that I've chosen are all blues and yellows because those are the colors that are most commonly found in the Islamic tiles. You are f welcome and free to choose whatever colors you want, but if you wanna be most similar to the uh, tiles in the Islamic mosques, then you might want to choose blues and yellows as well. Don't forget to color using symmetry, meaning that whatever color I put over here, I put the same color on the other side. Now I find it kind of tricky to go right here on the edge, so you have a couple of choices. You can just color a lot slower or a piece of scrap paper underneath of that corner to protect that edge. Happy accident, those are cape colors, blue and gold. Now I don't want to continue my dark blue all the way across to the rectangle that's right beside this one because then it will look like one giant rectangle that has four little squares in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use symmetry above instead of beside. So I'm gonna put the dark blue here and then I'll put the dark blue on the rectangle that is at the top of my paper. 
All right, and as you might recall, if there are any spaces that you want to leave a, just a square, you can just color those in. All right, so I think I'm ready now to start making some more lines in my little tile spaces. So the next thing I wanna make is right here in the center, I would like to make one of the rhombuses. So to make a rhombus, I need four open spaces, so there's four right here, and I need to make my lines using my straight edge so that they form a rhombus. So try and picture it in your mind. You can even draw it very lightly on your paper so you kind of know where you're going and then make sure you use your straight edge lining up those corners so your rhombus looks perfect in the end. All right, so I'm going to continue to work on mine and through the magic of YouTube, in just a few moments, I'll be right back with you with a finished work of art. All right, so through the power and magic of YouTube, there I have a finished work of art. I probably spent a good half an hour coloring mine, taking my time to fill in the spaces as nicely as I could, trying to really think deeply about where I was putting my triangles and which direction were they facing. Kind of looks like all mine are pointing down. Um, so I just tried to think deeply about that. Hopefully you will too. So I hope you had a great time making your Islamic tiles. They're just beautiful. I can imagine these hanging in your kitchen or on your refrigerator or any interesting place where people will see them. Um, and I think you'll get lots of compliments on them. So I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you back here tomorrow at the Heart of a Viking. HOB artists, don't forget to hop on over to Art Sonia to upload a photograph of your piece of artwork to your art portfolio. I can't wait to see it.